hunting high and low for boar and roe. Kai is after the best game meat Croatia has to offer. Field sports skills days as well as burning ammo, we look at some of the new kit the trade has to offer. Plus we have another exclusive offer and these are not even in the country yet. They're the new 3M Peltor electronic earplugs. We have news, we have hunting YouTube from the Field Sports Skills Day outside Bristol. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. and Tomo have been cooking up this trip for many years and now it's finally happening. Put the shoulder in the middle. We're in Croatia near Gospic, an area with lovely open pastures surrounded by mountains and the plan is to hunt this terrain. Leading up to this week, Tomo tells us the weather has been awful, heavy rains and low cloud cover. So he's been worried about what he may be able to offer. But with us fresh off the plane and eager to get on, we're heading to a high seat with Igor. We're going to a location where Tomo sing boar pretty much every night. We'll hopefully be able to drop one for the table. So I don't know how far we've got to go. There's a bit of a language barrier here. We just have to... Uh, Follow the hand signals. There's two feeding stations. I can see one down there. Probably about 80 yards. And one over there, probably about 70 yards. But the heist is quite nice. It's like a box with a double glazing window, which is something I'm not really used to back up. Very cosy. Isn't that right, David? They know there's a nice lone boar feeding here and it would be just right for Kai's Croatian Game and Flames extravaganza in a few days. The only thing that comes out to play is a roe doe. It's still a treat to sit and watch. The following morning, the visibility is still too poor to head up into the mountains. It means that Kai has to hunt the low ground. So, so the plan is, you will follow Igor and you will, you will stop through this valley. Yeah. There are a few kilometers of, uh, of just fields. Like flat grassland. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you won't be climbing or hiking. Anything like that. David will be pleased about that. Yeah, he will be because he's carrying uh, lots of great cameras. Poor, poor David, and, yeah. Exactly. I mean, um, <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> he's, always, uh, he's underpaid for his job. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you will go after it. Uh, okay. You will try to find drawback or a wild boar. Uh, the presence in this mm. valley is huge however they are very spooky because we have wolf yeah and bears in in the valley in this area lot. here yeah last night one bear was just uh, one kilometer from our lodge. not far at all exactly so not far at all so the funny thing is we were using this rifle yeah which is an amalgamation of my rifle and your rifle exactly so i've got a 306 back at home the blaza and you've got the 300 wind mag so um, yeah. at the Northern Shooting Show last week, I gave you this, the stock, yeah, the bolt correct. and the scope, and you've just taken it over and fitted it onto your barrel and your bolt head. Exactly, it's like a Lego. Lego, <laughs> Lego rifle. <laughs> yeah. 
it definitely feels like rogue country. However, there's so much pressure from predators here, they're easily spooked. From the car, we've already been lucky enough to spot a jackal. There's also lynx, fox, and of course bear. And today, there's a kai. Igor clearly knows where he's going, and it's no surprise when he walks us straight into a nice buck. Ready. We walk around for some while, and beautiful lush meadows just come through over here, and I just see this silver head. With the, uh, with the antlers sticking out. And they were just grazing away. It wasn't, didn't really see us. And I just had a gap between the trees to shoot. And then luckily David could get over my shoulder. And we just dropped it just here. So uh, what a beautiful, beautiful animal. We can eat now, we've got some meat. So we'll take the, um, we'll take the haunches and we'll take the saddle. Obviously we use all of it, but um, I've got some great recipes in mind for this, for tomorrow. So. Perfect, thank you very much. <laughs> Tomo, how are you doing? Oh, well done. Well done. Your friend Ego delivered, so it's a... Excellent, excellent shot. You took the chance, so that's what it counts. Absolutely, yeah. So Thomas, is this a good buck that you would uh, take off here? Definitely, because he, he reached already his maximum yeah. for this area. And we don't think that he would be any better as a trophy. No, no. Um, uh, also, we have a quota that we have to shoot every year, so yeah. we try to meet the quota by the government, course, but yeah. also to take the right ones. And uh, this one was, this one was right. Um, it, it looks nice. It looks very symmetrical. Yeah, it's very uniform, and it's yeah, yeah. beautiful, like nice silver head. Yeah. Beautiful colours, yeah. and I think this one's going to be quite good to eat. So we're going to use the haunches and the saddles. So we have meat now for dinner. Yeah, uh, which is <laughs> which is fantastic. Which is the main thing. So we'll be able to feed everyone. We can start thinking about spices that you are going spices, to Spices, marinades. Yeah. Get the fire going. So we can learn a lot from you actually. We have well we haven't had breakfast yet and I'm getting hungry, so uh, Me too. Christian, you? Yeah, well, Christian's probably always hungry, so <laughs> <laughs> Kai would like to have the antlers brought home, but Tomo doesn't like the idea of getting Safety special permission to enter Wales, and, uh, Kai's birthplace. I normally don't travel to Wales. I don't, <laughs> I don't even live in Wales. Permit, yeah, I know. Do you know that David was born in the same hospital as me? Really? Not at the same time, obviously. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a few years difference between us there. <laughs> The row is packed up and tagged up. It's a requirement in Croatia, with all animal carcasses colour coordinated. Oh really, so for the row buck is red and yes. for the row does, would that be red as well? Also it's red. Okay, it's fine. For uh, bear it's green. I'll see, okay. So you've got three books? Yeah. yeah. Three books? Yeah, exactly, so you for don't want this thing in the UK, yeah? Three books for one buck? Exactly. That's crazy. So now, can you imagine when we shoot like that's 100 a, boar in a day? <laughs> that's it's, a lot of paperwork. Oh yeah. That, but, yeah it's I mean, it's good that you trace the provenance because yeah, it's, yeah. It's, be, it's better to have a system than no system. Yeah. But, and also um, the thing is, it prevents so, poaching. So, 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 yeah. yeah. It prevents poaching, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. And I, I think in, in some ways it's good, but sometimes it's over the top. It's over the top, I would say. However, um, if somebody stops you and you don't have it, they assume, okay, it's post. And you're and, in trouble. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. in big trouble. Yeah. With the row in the bag, the pressure is off a bit. But we're back out again tonight with all the bells and whistles as the pig appears to be coming late on. We've been looking at the trail cam footage and that boar has been coming in about half nine, ten o'clock. And uh, at that point, it's going to be a bit too dark, really, just to use the normal scope. So we're going to try and use the night vision, hopefully. With Igor's help, we can uh, bag ourselves a ball, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to scopes with a 56mm objective lens, the 58mm of the Blaza provides an additional light yield of 7%. 
But even with the added extra, dark is dark. Good thing about the Palazzo is to make it safe. So I can take out the whole magazine. I'll obviously just double check there's nothing in there. I'll pop that in my pocket and then I know the rifle is completely safe to go up. I've got quite a high incline here with a high seat, so it makes it really safe. The boar does materialise. Surprise, surprise, this time it's still in reasonable light. Ready? That was incredible. We've been looking at that spot for ages and there's nothing. Looking over the feed pile over here, there's nothing. And all of a sudden, I just see this big black blob at the corner of my eye. From here, it looks huge. <laughs> it, looks, it looks bigger than the ones we have back at home. That is incredible. I'm speechless. Well spotted, because concentration-wise, we were sort of fading a bit on the phone. Sort of. Yeah, you know, when you're here for a few hours, it's very difficult to try and be um, as alert because you tend to kind of whisper and talk in between. But he'd come on the feed pile and um, yeah, we, we took the chance. So it's actually not too bad outside. I stuck the night vision on, but I didn't put it on full IR mode. I, um, I put it in the daylight mode and um, probably about 80 metres, 90 metres, and we just, uh, I aimed for the head, and it just dropped on the spot, but it's, uh, that was cool. Thank you very much, Igor. I think one of the biggest challenges is now, is how on earth do we get it out? For you, my friend, Hunter, very good day. <laughs> it's a very good day. Thank you very much. For Do you want to put in my hat? Yes. Okay. I, I don't think I've asked for a better day. We had a roebuck this morning and we've had a wild boar this evening. So uh, I think we'll get this back now and uh, celebrate. And then we'll put this in the, the larder, the chiller, in the fridge. Yes. Hang it and then we will cook it in uh, two days time. Good. To eat. Yes, very good. I think he understands. <laughs> I hope he understands. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay then. The drag begins. <sighs> Do you want 
Just to the road here? Yes, yes. Thank God for that. Hi, boy. <laughs> car? Yep. Kai is puffing hard. He did have mild pneumonia earlier in the year, so he has a bit of an excuse. Yeah, man. All right, I'm struggling here, all right. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Ah, done. <sighs> Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the plan worked. So everything worked as we planned. Choreographed. Almost like he put the ball there and he knew he was going to come. But that's what the trail camera is for, and that's the good thing about that. Exactly. No, I mean uh, we've been tracking this one for over a month. Yeah. And it's not the only bore we have. Uh, however, this one was always regular. Yeah. And it was male, so basically it was. It's a good one. one to take. We don't want to take a exactly. sow because they've got you know exactly. piglets this time of year. And if you notice, uh, there are lots of uh, lots of activities with. Uh, females and small ones yes we like not to disturb them we move away we go to some other places where we have uh, more males and perfect and he's a prime example of a good one to take and then he'll go in the larder the chiller yeah and then we'll cook him up on cook Thursday it again. yeah can't wait we, we're gonna have a feast we have a proper feast don't we yeah, so we've got uh, roebuck yeah. and boar yeah I need mm -hmm. to think of some recipes listen you have all night long I mean I could suggest you some using from friend of ours from England. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, <laughs> if you do it, what you've done today, uh, it's heaven. I cooked ribs earlier on <laughs> with, a, with a secret marinade and that oh, turned that out. That was really. amazing. That was, that was the best so far. A tissue sample will be taken for a trichinella roundworm testing by the local vet before we can eat this lovely boar. The chances are slim, but you definitely don't want to risk it. Nice size boar. It's been a big yeah. day, and the forecast for tomorrow is good. Next time, our Welsh steam engine will be puffing up the mountain passes, encountering some wonderful wildlife en route. For more information about the Blazer rifles, optics, and clothing, go to blazersporting.com or blazer.de. Thank you, Kai, Tomo, Christian and Igor. And we'll see that game feast very soon. Next up, that part-timer Wright, who is off to Asia this week. Actually, I'm off to the China hunting show in Shanghai. So while we're away, don't forget to feed the dog. Don't forget to this is the Field Sports Channel News. DEFRA have performed a U-turn on general licences. It has re-allowed the shooting of all pest bird species that Natural England banned in April, apart from the collared doves. The only other difference is that it won't allow shooting on protected areas of England, including European designated SACs and SPAs, without a written licence. Chris Packham's action to end general licences during the critical breeding season has resulted in the loss of hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of livestock and an unknown loss to wildlife. Ironically, the success of the coloured dove is one of the main reasons that the turtle dove is dying out in the UK. And Chris Packham has long campaigned in Europe to stop the shooting of the turtle doves. The countryside rally in London is still on. For more information, visit F channel forward slash general licenses. The RSPB and the National Trust are very excited about breeding hen harriers. Both organisations have put out on social media about the birds breeding in the north of England, in the forest of Boland in Lancashire on the National Trust's High Peak Moors in the Peak District National Park, after months of accusing gamekeepers of killing hen harriers. However, neither of them see fit to mention that the birds are successfully breeding on grouse moors, not RSPB reserves. An animal rights activist could be heading for prosecution. Three years ago, someone stole a Springer Spaniel puppy called Mabel from a house in Devon. Mabel's owners say they have information that she was stolen by an animal rights activist who doesn't believe that gun dogs should be used as gun dogs. The owners threaten to name the activist on the 21st of June if they do not give themselves up. Watch the story unfold on Mabel's Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash find Mabel puppy.
Sea eagles reintroduced into Scotland are preying on healthy lambs. It's been acknowledged formally for the first time. Crofters have long believed that the birds of prey will kill and eat very young sheep, but public bodies behind the reintroduction of the sea eagles have finally admitted that that is the case. The white-tailed eagle is the largest bird of prey in the UK and the fourth largest eagle in the world. And finally, YouTubers gather in Utah for the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. Top air gunners, including the UK's Giles Barry of the Air Gun Gear Show and Ted Beers of Ted's Holdover were there. The event, sponsored by FX Air Guns, was won by Matt Dubber of Air Arms Hunting SA. For more information, go to rockymountainairgunchallenge.com. Thanks to James Adams Ford for sending us this film. You are now up to date with the Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Later in the show, our exclusive, exclusive offer, Peltor Ear Defenders, before they even hit the UK. But first, didn't we have a lovely time the day we went to braces? Because it's field sports, it's a range day, burning free ammo instead of rubber. There is a chance to see how the high performance kit handles and speak to the professionals in the pit lane while avoiding heavy rain, never appreciated on a track day. In attendance we have Blaser, Mauser, Zauer, Thomas Jacks with a range of Thermal, Swarovski and Emberleaf knives. Starting at the top of the ground is Swarovski Optic representative and R8 shooter Darren Fizz Fizakli. He's showing the punters around the new R8 Silence. Who needs a moderator when there's a shrouded barrel? What I really liked about this when I tried it for the first time this morning was the fact that the, the balance of the rifle has become really central again. You've shot that for the first time, what do you think? I think it's fantastic. It's as good as a moderated rifle. It's the future. I think it may be. It really is. No, 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 I'm very impressed. And certainly from sound attenuation, it's the same as a moderated rifle. It's good. Dropping down, and Thomas Jacks has the new mounts they're distributing for the Pulsar kit. So we've got an R8 rifle, a Digisite N450, um, with our new Inno mounts. Keeps it nice, compact, which is a direct fit onto a blazer. There are a few familiar faces here too. Andy's on the shotgun layout with his F-16 and Kai is making the most of everything. Even this hair gel can withstand this weather. <laughs> now, the event is hosted by the guys from gun shop Braces of Bristol, where they open up their range for 50 first come, first serve shooters every day for three days. It's now in its third year and Dan wants to see it expand and grow. I'd like to see some more brands on board. Obviously, the, the Blaser Sour Mauser family have been a big part of growing, growing it, and it's fantastic to have them here every year. And you know, it's a lot, a lot of organisation that goes in, you know, into into making it run smoothly and, and being here. There's a lot of staff on on site, and uh, being able to actually shoot rifles and, and, and learn about the optics and, and know what you're shooting, it's great. You know, taking that opportunity to hands on. It's not just a, looking at it in a shop. Blaser Sporting is the main supporter of the event. In the last few weeks, a new boss has arrived, Frederick Hanna. Frederick is a regular on Blaser stands at the UK shows. He knows which of the more exciting rifles and shotguns that shooters are keen to try. Looking at the K95 carbon now, I mean, that really is the, the ultimate thing to, to have, in my opinion. You want one, don't you? 100%. I mean, uh, for, for me, a, a K95 carbon success in 6.5 Creedmoor is about as, as techy, as, as unique as it gets and, and for me as a UK rifle that's definitely what I'm going to go for. The great thing here about the Bracer shooting run is the, the driven board target. Uh, obviously us coming from Germany with us it, it is a big thing, it's a very established thing. We've got Thomas Wetisch here as well who's a, a Wild War veteran. 
Um, so it's, it's really nice to, to, to see these glowing eyes of the people who really get into it actually for the first time. And um, that's something we really feel. I mean, if I look at, at caliber numbers and so on, the, the wild boar calibers are picking up in the UK because much, much more people are now going over through the continent to shoot driven boar than, than five or ten years ago. No, really, I didn't realize that. There's definitely a trend, is there? 100%. And, and we see it also in the inquiries we get at shows and so on. It, the, the question about how do I put a, a proper driven bore rifle together, we, we get asked much more and more. And obviously, coming from one of the main wild bore markets back home in Germany, um, we have the expertise within the team and, and we're, we're really happy to sort these people out and, and give them our best advice. The Field Sports Skills Days will return bigger and better next year and there's still one to go this year at Swillingtons. We'll let you know when you can get yourself behind the newest, shiniest kit in the country and all for free. Keep an eye on F Channel slash skills. That was a great three days and thank you so much to everybody who came along. There are a couple of places left at the Swillingtons one. Go to F Channel slash skills like I said in the item you can still just about sign up if you're quick but we've got lots more it's going to be bigger and better next year now one thing you need while you are on a field sports skills day is ear defenders and we have a field sports nation exclusive offer for peltor ear defenders when the new 3m peltor electronic earplug arrives in the uk this month they will go on sale with an RRP of 220 euros. That's nearly 200 quid. Well, Peltor HQ is allowing us to offer a few sets at 140 pounds. Now, Peltor are better known for the cup style ear defender systems, but I used the prototypes of this model hunting hares in Sweden last year, and they were great. The earpieces are rechargeable via a USB jack on the charging case, and they have intuitive one button operation. Now we've only been given six pairs, so be very quick. To find out more about them and to buy a pair, go to fchannel slash 3M Peltor. Now from a lot of noise in a field outside Bristol to the wider world of hunting and shooting, on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. A new subscriber of ours, Nani Slingshot Shooter, has a good new Catapult channel. This is his film Slingshot Headshots Kills Only, all game shot on permissions and eaten, he adds. Another new subscriber of ours, The Lead Shed, brings out a spring air rifle hunting film, which has him out with his AATX 200HC and 177, and his range is on feral pigeons control duty with his HW 100KT. The owner of the house keeps white doves and wants the less desirable ferals knocked out because they are bringing in diseases. Hunterlot brings out occasional films from Scandinavia and the UK. Here's a winter capercaillie hunt in Sweden. Staying in the snow and moving to Norway, Jonas Breda is out fox hunting with the foxes moved along by dogs to his gun. Matt Merrick hunting from Australia recounts a recent hunt for a fellow buck that he missed out on last year on account of bringing the wrong gun. No such mistake this year. In South Texas, here is 6.5 Creedmoor, Australian bullets versus Texas as hogs by Outdoor Adventures. He is bowling them over. And finally, Diggs Art looks like the field sports channel of the Philippines. It's hard to understand what's going on here, but fascinating to watch it unfold. Translation of the description is seek another place with a nice flotation. It turns out they are trying to shoot fish with a rifle converted to harpoon gun. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie fieldsportschannel.tv Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so, please pop over to our website. F Channel is the fastest way to get there. fieldsportschannel.tv is the slow way. And you can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can pop your email address into our register form at the bottom of the front page and we'll send you news about this show. Field Sports Britain is out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us. Go to fchannel slash shares to find out about that. I will see you next week when I'm back from China. In the meantime, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>